Good morning and welcome to what has always been called PhotoApps.Expert Live Training, but we're changing things up a bit. This is going to make a lot more sense over the next month or so as some more changes happen, but this is no longer going to be called PhotoApps.Expert Live Training. It's actually going to be called Photo Joseph's Training, even though the Photo Joseph part wasn't in the title card, but that's okay because the PhotoApps.Expert thing is, is not, is, is well, you'll understand shortly. So this is live training. If you've never seen a live training before, here's the way live training works. Live training is free when it's live. Like it is live right now. Well, if you're watching it live now, then you're watching live. If you're watching the recording later, then it's not live. But if you're watching the live show right now, then this is free. That's the whole part of it being live is uh, you get to watch it on YouTube or on my website or Twitch or Facebook, wherever you like, and you get to watch it for free, which is super cool. Um, then... These trainings I take down off of the free page and put them behind the paywall at what is currently photoapps.expert. We'll talk a little bit more about membership later on, but that's something that you can either purchase individual videos for download or pay a monthly or annual fee and have access to all the content. And this is the 17th, because this is a series, our episode 1700. This is the beginning of the 17th series that I've done on an individual app. And these, these live trainings are deep. We go really, really deep into these. Now, the other part of the live training series is the first episode, the one with the zeros. So in this case, 1700, that one stays free forever. And the, the 1700 or the 1600 before, the 1500 before that, those are the overviews. This is where we take a very high level look at the app. So if you are either unfamiliar with the app at all or just wanna get a little bit of a cursory look at it, you'll be able to watch that anytime on YouTube for free. From here, we'll dive into very, very deep, specific aspects of the app. We'll spend 30 to 45 minutes for each training session on an individual component of the app, not like an individual feature, but a component of the app. And uh, sometimes these sessions are only uh, maybe five or six long for the entire app. Sometimes they get into the 20s and even 30s. And so we can get some pretty deep training on these apps through this live training series. This app, the one we're launching off today, we're kicking off with today, LumaFusion, is a biggie. This one's deep, so I think this one's going to be around for a while. We're going to have some, uh, we're going to have some really interesting and deep, dark education on this one. So that, my friends, is what this is all about. That is what you're watching today. And again, today we are looking at the overview of Luma Fusion by a company called Luma Touch. Now, if you've never heard of this before, you have no idea what the heck it is you're looking at or about to look at. What you're going to be seeing is an app that is a nonlinear editor, an NLE, a video editor on iOS. It runs on iPad and on iPhone you'll see the interface is quite, quite deep. And so having extra space of an iPad is definitely uh, to your advantage, but it does work on an iPhone. You can even do this. You can do your editing on a small iPhone screen, which is pretty remarkable. And the whole idea behind this is you have an incredible amount of power on your iOS device. It's, if you've ever played with iMovie, iMovie is awesome, right? iMovie is a great, simple video editing app emphasis on simple. And then you go to your desktop and you sit down to Final Cut Pro or Premiere, one of these more robust heavy duty apps, and you think, man, there's all these great features. If only I could do that. Well, you can. That's the crazy thing. And you're going to see over the course of the next couple of months, frankly, as we go through this whole app, just how deep this rabbit hole goes. It is an incredibly, incredibly powerful app. But of course, as with all powerful apps, you don't have to use every last single feature in there to get the most out of it. At $20, which is all this app costs, which is incredible, at $20, you actually have access to an incredible amount of features. So even if you're only going to use a little bit of it at 20 bucks, it's still a bargain. So, you know, go for it. So today we're going to be doing an overview. And typically in an overview, I try to take a high level view of the whole app and show you essentially everything that's there without going too deep into it. You know, we'll look at color tools, we'll look at the basic editing tools and so on, just so you get a flavor, a taste of it. And then we'll go in deep into it in future sessions. I am doing that today. I mean, however, instead of just starting from scratch, kind of with a blank canvas, and often what I would do in these trainings in the overview is I would just create a blank canvas and show the tools, show the menus, that sort of thing. I'm actually going to open up a project that I recently finished in here and show you a little bit about the project and what went together, what went into making that, just because I think that'll be a bit of a better understanding of what can be done in this app. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now we're going to start this by talking about how the footage gets into your iPad. If you're shoot, you can shoot video on your iPhone or on your iPad and then edit with LumaFusion. That's totally a legit workflow. If you are shooting with your iPhone, and let's be honest, it's a pretty darn good camera. If you're shooting with this, you can then edit on the iPad or iPhone with LumaFusion and be good to go. That's great. But a lot of us are shooting with bigger, more robust, better cameras, um, like, for example, the Lumix cameras. Is that, which one is this? The G, that's the G9. It should have the GH5 here. But anyway, a Lumix camera, whatever you got. You can bring that footage into your iPad or iPhone and edit that as well. 
get a little tip to the hat here. The project you're gonna see was shot in 4K, that's Ultra HD, 4K, 60 frame per second, 60p video, um, even shot in Vlog, and all of that is edited on the iPad, no problem. Now this iPad is the iPad Pro, it is the latest model, the 10 inch one is the small one, I got rid of the bigger one, and uh, it just sings with it. But I will tell you that before I had this one, I had the, the original iPad Pro 12 inch, so the very first one that came out, which is now two years old, and I was able to edit 4K 60p on that, no problem. Here it's just smoother and even cleaner. So it's, it's pretty remarkable what you can do. Okay, so if you're gonna shoot on a bigger camera, on your Lumix, on your Canon, whatever you're shooting with, and you wanna get that footage into LumaFusion, how do you do that? Well, there's a couple ways you can do that, right? You could use a, a SD card, do I even have one? I forgot to grab it. Anyway, the SD card lightning reader. So it's a little lightning adapter. You plug it in, SD card reader on the back, pop it in, and that copies everything over to the Photos app. And from the Photos app, you pull things into LumiFusion. That works out great. Another option, and this is the option that I did for this particular project, which is why I'm going to show it to you here, is the integration with this thing called Narbox. Now, this training is about LumaFusion, not all about Narbox, but I do want to show you and I do want to talk about how the footage goes through the Narbox because it is a really, really interesting component to this. If you're... If you bought a, let's say you bought one of the smaller ones, what are they coming? 128 gigs, the smallest size right now. You're going to fill up that 128 gigs pretty quickly, and you can't plug in external hard drives to your iPad, right? So what you can do with the Narbox is you can have not only the internal storage on here, which I think this one's 256, I think is what this one is, um, and then you can also plug in external hard drives to this. You can basically have unlimited storage on this little thing. So what is this little thing? This is... At its core, it is a computer. This has a hard drive in it, it has SD card readers on it, and it has a complete computer in there, a complete processor that you access over your phone or your tablet. You access it wirelessly. And it's really, really slick. So the idea is that you go out in the field, you shoot your stuff on your cards, you take your SD card, you pop it into the Narbox, you copy the content from the card into the Narbox. And once you start copying, you can hit copy and then throw this thing in your bag or it actually gets kind of hot. You like leave it hanging outside your bag and then go, go back to shooting. And while you're shooting, it's copying everything over. And you do that throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, you now have, let's say, four memory cards that you've shot full of data, copied onto your NAR box, and it's all ready to go. You can now connect this directly. If you're going back to your desktop, you can connect it directly to your computer, copy the files, or even directly edit from here. Or what's really interesting is being able to access it wirelessly again, over your phone or over your or via your tablet. Now, when you're accessing it, you can use the Narbox, Narbox app, and you can do basic edits, just kind of like simple little editing in there. But what's really cool is you can access the content on the Narbox wirelessly within LumaFusion, and that's how this whole thing comes together. So I want to show you briefly how this whole thing works. So I'm just going to, I'm going to power this thing up, um, give that a moment to start up and start its Wi-Fi. Let me give you a little bit of a close-up view of this thing, in case you haven't seen it before. Um, you can see it's not... It's about the size of my iPhone, obviously a bit thicker than the phone, but about the size of my iPhone there. So it's small. It's essentially like a small hard drive. It has two little doors on the front that have card readers in them. So there's an SD and a micro SD card, and then this side has got USB ports. So one of those is for charging, and one of them is for hooking up a external hard drive um, and data transfer. So you've got a couple different ways to connect your, connect your files, connect your files into here. You could even plug a a faster card reader, a faster SD card reader into the this port, the USB 3 port, and copy over that way, which is pretty slick as well. Anyway, so I've powered it on. You can see the light flashing on there. I'm going to go ahead and drop in an SD card, so I'll just pop that one into there. And then I'm going to connect wirelessly to the NAR box from my tablet. Now, the way we do this is just go into our standard app settings, uh, standard uh, uh, settings app, and connect to the wirelessly. So let's make sure I got everything set up correctly here. Set up a whole bunch of new presets yesterday. Hopefully, I get these all right. Um, we're going to do this. There, look, see, now we get the iPad in me. Like, I'm in a little tiny sliver in the corner here, but I can be here. And I'm going to open up the settings, go to the Wi-Fi panel, and we're going to look for the Narbox. Now, I've named mine PJ Narbox, Photo Joseph Narbox. We see it there at the bottom. Tap on that. If, incidentally, you fire it up and it's not there yet, um, just, you know, back out of Wi-Fi, go back in. It's like connecting to any Wi-Fi network. It, sometimes it just doesn't show up, so back up and come back in or toggle the Wi-Fi on and off. That usually helps. So you see it's connected. There we go. Now I can, I, I'm not going to go straight into LumaFusion. I want to show you the Narbox app itself first. Um, little thing, the Narbox app doesn't work in landscape mode. So we're going to launch this and go portrait. And uh, let's see, I set up, there we go. I even set one of those up. We're in portrait mode. Update available for the Narbox. <laughs> it is often updated. We're not going to update this today. 
Um, we are looking right now at the content on my Narbox. So here's a bunch of stuff that's on here, photo and video. But what I wanted to show you was how you got the content onto here in the first place. So up in the top left, you see it says devices. I tap on that. No name, that's the SD card that I just put in there. I tap on that. And it shows me all the content in here. Now, you'll notice right now we're seeing a lot of weird files and then we see the actual pictures. Cameras always produce all kinds of funky little extra files that you don't really need for the majority of work. And so we don't want to copy those over. If you look down at the very bottom, you'll see a row of icons. There's one that looks like a video camera, still camera, uh, a music icon, and then a little generic files icon. If I tap the generic files icon, that is now hidden the generic files, right? So if it's lit up, it's showing them. So I don't need those. I don't need music. Um, I don't think I actually have any videos on this card, but if I tap if I tap the video one, the videos would be hidden. All I'd be looking at would be the still photos. These were already all copied over here, but the next step, you can see at the top, it says backed up in Narbox. Uh, you would see if there's anything on here that hadn't been copied over, it would say not backed up in Narbox. Then I would tap the select button in the top right. There's gonna be a one button, select all. You see it there, select all, but that's selecting what's already copied. But I would select what isn't copied, and then I tap the copy files button and it copies it over and that's it. And it's, once you start that process, you can now just, like I said, throw this thing in your bag or uh, hang it off the outside of your bag. It's all weatherproof and shockproof. Um, so it is, because it is a computer, there is a, it does get hot. There's actually a big heat sink on the top of it. So you would just kind of let that hang outside your bag so the air can get to it and, and off it goes. And that's it, that's all there is to it. So then once the, co the content is on here, you're now ready to start editing, start working with it inside of LumaFusion. So that's what we're gonna do next. So let me swap out of here. Let's launch up LumaFusion. Let's go sideways here and pick the right, uh, the right preset. There we go. And let me give you a brief tour of what we're looking at here. So this, my friends, is LumaFusion. Let me back up here to the top level and I'm going to create a whole new project. We're just gonna start from scratch. I'm not gonna build anything crazy. We're gonna start with scratch, from scratch for a, a new project, and then I'm going to show you an existing one like I talked about. And um, by the way, for those of you who are watching in the live chat room, hello and greetings, it's great to see you here. If you have any questions throughout this, by all means, drop them into the chat. I will do my best to answer them. If you put my name, if you just put at photo Joseph in front of it, that helps and then I know that you've got a question for me. Um, but we will make sure we take a look at the chat room and make sure we don't miss anything. So if you have any questions, just drop them in there and I'll do my best to get to them. Okay, bottom, let's see here. Do I have my touches turned on on here? Let's enable that, show touches. This is a nice little feature that they added because I asked for it a while ago. You can now see, look at that, you can see on the screen where I'm touching. Isn't that nice? Oh, thank you guys for putting that in there. All right, so I'm gonna create a new project. Bottom very left corner, there's a little plus, I tap on that. You see it says new project, I can call it whatever I want, obviously, let's just name that. We'll just call this, um, this is LT, um, let's go live training 1700. And then underneath that, you see you have choice of frame rate and your frame aspect ratio. Now I shot all this footage that we're gonna be working with here at 4K 60p, 60 frame per second, but I don't wanna deliver in 60p. The reason that I shoot 60p is so that I can deliver in 30, but then do a half speed slowdown do a 50% speed playback and still have every frame of video in there, no frames generated by the software, so it looks really, really clean. So this is how I always shoot, 4K 60, but edit 4K 30. That's just, that's just me. So I'm gonna choose 30, and then there's the frame aspect ratio, standard video, 16 by nine, but I could change it. And one of the really interesting things I'll point out very first on here that you can change to is nine by 16. And you might be thinking, well, that's a weird, wow, that's vertical video vertical video for your iPhone. If you wanted to shoot a video that you were gonna deliver vertically, a great place for that would be Instagram Stories. You wanted to edit a video for an Instagram story and you wanted to use more than the built-in Instagram editor, you could do your editing on your iPad or on your iPhone and edit it in that aspect ratio and upload from there. Pretty slick, right? And we got a bunch of other aspect ratios in there, but we're gonna go with our standard 16 by nine. So there's that, create that project. And that's it. We now have an empty timeline. If you've ever worked with an NLE before, a nonlinear editor, this should start to look a bit familiar here. Okay, top left corner. This is where we get to our content. You see it says Narbox right now. We're getting ahead of things. Let me tap on the icon in the very top left corner, and it shows all the different sources that I can get to my content from. We have our photos library, so if I tap on that, it's gonna access the photos app, show everything that's in there, that's on my iPad already. And you'll see we have our moments and albums. I go into albums, I'm gonna see all my albums in here, just like I have, just like if I was looking at the photos app. If I go back up into here, you'll see the next option is Narbox. We'll come back to that. Imported, if you've directly imported content in for, specifically for editing, you've already brought into the um, into LumaFusion. There's a royalty-free music library that it comes with. This is also where you get your titles, transitions, and your iTunes library if you wanna to get to music that way. So that's cool, right? All right, let's go into Narbox since that's what's connected. So I tap Narbox, you see it's listed there directly. Also up in the top 
left corner there, you'll see this little battery symbol. Nice little bonus in there. Nice, let's see if I can figure out how to do this. There we go. Nice and big on there. We get that battery symbol on there. So that way we know the battery status of the Narbox as we're going. Um, obviously, everything running on battery power, you edit all day long, and suddenly you're going, what happened to my battery? Well, now you can keep an eye on that. So that's nice. Okay, within here, we're looking at it. We're seeing two folders, Narbox and No Name. No Name is that SD card, because I haven't popped that out yet. So I could actually see the content of the card directly, which is pretty cool. But I'm going to tap on Narbox. Within there, we're going to see all the different folders that I currently have. There's a lot of content on here already. One of the things you'll see is at the top, it says Favorites. If you have already gone into the, Lum uh, into the Narbox app and marked Favorites, which is a really common workflow, right? You're in the Narbox app. You're swiping through your pictures, swiping through your video. Oh, I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. You mark them as favorites. Then when you go into the favorites folder here within LumaFusion, you can actually see the ones that you've marked favorites already. So that's great. That's a huge time saver. If you've already done some of that culling in the, in the Narbax app, you can see those results, see those favorites marked inside of LumaFusion itself. Let me just back up a level. I see all the folders in there. Uh, we're going to dig into the folders in a moment, but I want to point out at the bottom all these other folders that are in there. Because this is a hard drive, which I can actually connect to my computer or mount onto my computer, mount on like any other hard drive, I can put anything I want on here. It doesn't have to just be stuff that I've shot on my camera and copied over. So if I want to, let's say I've got graphics that I like to use, maybe an animation that I've built in After Effects or Motion that I want to use in my production, or lower thirds things that I've built in Photoshop that I want to bring over, or a sound effects library, or a licensed music library. Whatever content I want to bring, one of the great ways that I want to include in my edit, one of the great ways that we can get it into the edit is to copy it onto the Narbox. And now I've got it all here, and I can access that just like all the rest of my footage. And so that's what I've done here. That's what we're actually looking at here. You'll see that we have in here a series of LUTs because we can actually work with vlog footage and apply a LUT to our footage. We have, I have a music library. This is music that I've licensed, so I've got that copied onto here. Um, I've got a sound effects library, sound effects that I've purchased or licensed. Um, test, I have no idea what that is. Um, and then there's some still photos from the last project that I worked on, the one that I'm going to be showing you momentarily here. There's some still photos that I had copied on. So lots of different ways that you can utilize this, and then you can just access all of that as if it was any other hard drive connected to your system, because that's essentially what it is at this point. All right, so let's go back into the main content library, and I'm going to look for a particular folder. Uh, let's see here, let me, what do I want here? Let's go for, uh, I had a particular date that I wanted to go into. Um, 514, is that the right date? We're gonna find out, yes, that's the right one. So we see in here, there's a bunch of content. Let me zoom, that's a bit too close. Let me zoom into this a little bit. Sorry, while I fly the screen all over the place. The zoom system on iOS is a little cumbersome at times. Okay, so here's content that I've copied in. You can see some of this is from the drone. It says DJI on it. This is off of my uh, off my drone in there. And then there's some content that was copied off of the GH5 or GH5S, whatever I was shooting with there. So there's a bunch of content here. Okay, so I go, all right, well, I just want to see what one of these shots is, right? So let me zoom out of this thing. I'll tap on one of these shots, tap on it, and it loads it up into the viewer over on the right-hand side. At this point, I can just hit play. Let me get my audio on here, although I don't think there's any audio on this. So here I'm playing, playing that video. We can see it's playing, right? So like that, I can play it, I can scrub through, and I clearly picked a very exciting shot in this. Pick a slightly more dramatic one. But on the next shot in here, oh, and incidentally, if you look at the thumbnail itself, you'll see a bit of information on there. The icon on the very right, let me kind of zoom way into this thing, make it nice and big, there we go. The icon on the uh, very right tells me that it is local. If it was an empty cloud, it would be something that was in, for example, your iCloud library, but not yet downloaded. Um, and incidentally, if you tapped on it, it would then automatically download it. it obviously, you'd have to wait for that to happen, but it would download it. Um, so we're going from right to left for some strange reason. <laughs> At 3840 by 2160, that's the size. So this is Ultra HD 4K video. Next to that is the duration at 16 seconds long. And next to that is a little icon telling me that it is a video clip. If it was a still photo, that would be a different icon. So, so there you go. Okay, so I've selected that in there. I hit on play again. And uh, let's see here, there we go. We're flying through, flying through the air here. And at some point I have to decide, right, I want a portion of this clip copied over to my timeline here. So what portion do I want? Well, we can see as I'm playing this, it's kind of going back and forth, and that was kind of not a great shot. So let's, uh, let's just go through here and mark an in and an out point. And by marking an in and out point, just like using any other NLE, you mark an in and an out point and then add that to your timeline. So I'll go through here and I'll say, let's say right about there. And from here, I have a couple different ways I can mark my in and out point. I can tap on an icon to mark that in point, or what I could do as well, let me scroll forward a little bit, is I could actually just swipe down on the screen, swipe down, and it marks an in point. I can then play that, pause it again. Oop, helps if you don't uh, click off of it. There we go. Come back here. I can play that, pause it, 
at any point go, that's where I want the out point, swipe up to mark an out point, or I can grab the handle, grab the out point handle, and move that, grab the in point handle, and move that. You can do it however you like. Now, at this point, to add this to my timeline, there is a button in the bottom left of that window. I'm going to tap right next to it. You see where I'm highlighting right there. That will copy it down, or I can just tap and hold on the video and drag it down. Now, at this point, what it's supposed to do is, let's say you've got a 20-second clip, which I think what this was, and you've just marked three seconds of it. It will choose just those three seconds, plus a little bit of handles, and copy that over. So it'll give you a little bit of fudge room, but it will copy just what you've marked and brought it over. Unfortunately, I have to say that there is a brand new bug that just showed up I, like within the last few days. <laughs> I know this is the danger of updating your software as often as I do. Um, there's a bug that snuck in there where it's now copying the entire file. It is not supposed to work that way. It has never worked that way. I don't know where this bug came from, but it's new. I'm sure it'll be fixed soon. But at the moment, it is copying the entire file over. Yeah, say levy. It is supposed to just copy the piece of it. And the reason that that's important is if you, if you shoot in 5, 10, 15, 20 second chunks, it really doesn't matter if you're copying the whole thing. But let's say you've shot a long piece, a couple minutes, maybe 10 minute long shot, and you don't really want that entire 10 minute long piece copied over to the internal storage on your, um, on your iPad. So you really only want the pieces that you need. So that's the way it's supposed to work. That's the way it always has worked. Something broke like just yesterday. It's just killing me. But anyway, it did. So now we've done that. Now it's on the timeline here. You can see now I can play this on my timeline. All right, so there's the footage that I just added in there. And I go, well, I didn't really get that edit very good. I want to I want to trim that. Well, I can. On the timeline, I can trim this. Now, normally, I would only be able to trim to the amount that I actually copied over. In this case, it's actually copying, it's copied the whole thing, so I can trim through the entire file. But on the timeline, I'm able to trim and add that in. So now I've got a, a video clip on there. Let's add a piece of music to it. So up in the top left corner, tap on the, uh, the sources icon again. I'm going to, I could go into my iTunes library, but I know that I have music in my Narbox. So I'm going to go into Narbox and go back up a level. Let's go back up to this level here, music. This is my royalty-free uh, license music that I've already licensed. Tap on a track to preview it. See, it loads over. We can see the waveform. I can play it there. Okay, we're hearing it. Good. Yep, you guys are hearing it. So that's good, I see that on there. I can, just like with video, I can mark a portion of it if I want to, or I can just take the entire thing and, and add it onto my timeline and drop that on, and away we go. So now, I just added a big long song with a little tiny video clip. Let's pinch in here, and you can see the kind of motions that I'm making to drag around in here. Pinch on the timeline to zoom in and out of it. Um, very natural stuff, I mean, you, you figure all this out pretty much instantly. And so now I've got my music added to that. If I wanted to add transitions between clips, I do that through here as well. I could go back up to the transitions menu, Go in here, and we have a series of transitions we can add between shots. At this point, though, I'm going to jump into a pre-existing project because it'll be easier to show you the rest of the tools that I want to show you today through there. So up in the very top middle of the screen where it says Live Training 1700, that's the project I just created. I'm going to tap on that, and uh, let's go to where is my... Uh, here we go. Julian Alps and Socha Valley demo. So a little backstory here, what we're looking at. This is the project that I shot when I was in Slovenia for LumaFusion and Narbox. I did a project for them that was a vlog, and you may have seen that. If you haven't seen that, we'll link to that. Um, this is going on YouTube, so I can link to it here. We'll put it down below as well. And um, you can see that kind of behind the scenes vlog of, that told the story of not only the trip that we were on, but also the story of this whole editing process, why I was doing that, and so on. So that's all there. At the time, and in that video, if you watch it right now, it would say, there is a project that, um, that I'm editing that is done entirely on this solution. So all captured to here, entirely edited on here, which at the time of publishing the last video wasn't ready yet. That video is now done, finally. It took a while because I've been working with beta software. And that's really what it comes down to. So um, over the process of working with the app, um, finding different bugs and so on, and working with the company, we we're able to get all those things fixed, which is fantastic. It took a little longer than expected, but we, they are now shipping the version of software that we're working with today that, you can, that does all this right now. And the really exciting thing is that the video is finally done. So that video I'm going to play for you right now. It's only three minutes long, so you're going to get to watch that playing back from LumaFusion in here. And then we're, going to, um, then we're going to break it down a little bit and show you a little bit of what went into there. So let me open up the right project in here. It is a cold and frigid morning. It's about five below Celsius. I'm on my way to Ljubljana to meet Luca, the photography guide, who's going to be taking me into Socha Valley, which is where we'll be shooting today for the Narbox and LumaFusion project. 
This is the first cloudless day. It's absolutely gorgeous out. It's been super overcast, snowy, icy, rainy. It's still very cold, but hopefully we'll get some good shots today. That's where we're going, the Julian Alps. The plan was to drive through the mountains, but Zapat means closed. We can't drive through the mountains, so we're gonna have to go around through Italy, which doesn't sound all bad. That last part comes up that's for youtube and the little youtube elements come up there so that is the project that was put together entirely on here and um, on the surface it looks fairly simple series of cuts a couple of speed ups speed ramps couple transitions and so on but as with any good project there's a lot more to it than meets the eye so let's dig in and see what it used i'm um, burns tech saying this could totally be used for vacation promotion excellent thank you i i, I concur <laughs> all right let's um let's take a look at what's in here all right so here's here's the timeline. There we go. There's a pinch out of that thing. You can see there's a few layers of video, a lot of layers of audio in there. And let's just start breaking it down a little bit by bit. So the first thing, opening title, that is just title generated inside of LumaFusion. Nothing fancy here, just some straight up titles and then timed with the music there nicely. So why? Oh, I lost. I have to remember. I've been playing with my presets. I'm gonna remember to turn the audio back, turn it back on. Let's try that again. There we go. So in there, as we zoom in, just standard editing kind of thing, nothing fancy in here, but just to show what you, that you can do all of this on this app, there's my waveform. I can see the beat in my music. I can line up the edits with the beat of the music just by pinching in, zooming in, looking for the change in the waveform. Nice and easy in there. Um, let's see here. Let's do this. Let me open up this first video clip and double tap on this. You double tap on a video clip, it opens up to the more advanced editor, if you will. If within here, you have a huge amount of controls. Down in the bottom left, actually, you know, hold on, let me, let me back out of this because this is my final project. I don't want to mess this up. I'm going to open up the one I duplicated earlier called Demo. There we go. This is the one I'm allowed to screw up. Whew, mess that up. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back into here. Where were we? Back in the beginning. Okay. So I open this guy up and we are in, um, in the editor. Down in the bottom left there, you see it says Frame and Fit. Let's go ahead and zoom into that. You can see it says Frame and Fit. There's a timing, speed, and reverse button next to that. There is a audio tab next to that. And then there is the colors and effects tab next to that. So let's zoom out of all that. And going to one at a time. So frame and fitting, you can scale your video however you need to in there. You can, um, you can rotate this. You can, uh, you know, if you could do a, uh, yeah, if you wanted to punch in on the shot a little bit, you could do that. You could do a picture in picture from here. Nice and pretty straightforward, easy to do. 
you can incidentally keyframe all of this so that if you wanted to have it change size over time or punch in a little bit over time, do a little push in, you can do that as well. Pretty slick. If I go to the next tab, speed and reverse. So remember I told you I shot all of these at 60p. So on here, I could take this down to 50%. There it is, half speed. And now it's going to play back frame for frame a video giving me that 50% slowdown on the 30p timeline because remember I set it to 30p. Go to the next one, there's the audio tab. Take a look at this, you have complete audio filtering in here. Now I haven't really used a whole lot of this, but you do have, you got high pass filters, delays, all different types of filtering, compression, and, and EQing type of effects in here. So if you need that, that is built into there as well. Volume control in here, you can do panning. If you've got a stereo file and you wanna pan it left to right, you can keyframe all of this. Um, configuration there, you can switch it from stereo to mono, whatever it might be. You can even do auto ducking. So if you have a music track and you want it to automatically get a little quieter when the dialogue comes in, you can do that as well. And then here's the crazy one, the color and effects tab. So this shot, let me see if I can reset all of this. Um, turn off the color and effects, let's see here. Um, oh, this is a different version of it, let's see, let me get rid of that. I can add a LUT to this. So I could go in here and I could add one of these existing LUTs that I've got loaded into here onto that. Um, and from there, I could further go in and do different effects. So I could add extra contrast to this. I'm going to my basic, basic uh, editing tools in here. You can see I can shift my gamma, shift my shadows, bring my shadows down or up on there. You can see exactly what's happening in the timeline there. Change contrast, change saturation, I want to saturate that shot. Um, you can do all of it, all the controls in here. Individual control your, your greens, add, add or remove a green cast, red cast, whatever it might be. It's just remarkable. You have a color tint to it. All of this built into the little iOS app. And I'm doing that on top of the LUT that I've already added on. Crazy, right? Let's back out of that. So there's the different shots in there. Uh, let's see here. Um, some other shots worth showing in here. Uh, oh, this is interesting. This is a different, okay, now I've got a different version of this thing up. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the jump cuts, there's the jump cuts. Oh, this is a good one to show, actually. This is kind of cool. This is a different version of it. That's okay. Okay, so if I wanted to do jump cuts in there, here's something I could do. So this is what I did for the final project. So I zoom in, there's a, a beat, right? So I can take that and I can slice it. Put a little scissor slice through that, right? So now I've sliced that track. But now I want to take this next track and I just want to slip it over a little bit. If I tap on the um, toolbox icon, so this is kind of right middle side of things, the toolbox icon, you'll see one of the options in there is slip. I bring that up and now I've got a slip tool. So I can slip that forward a little bit. And now when I play this back, I've just made a little jump cut in there. So you have slip tools in there. So not only can you adjust your in and out points, as you would obviously expect, you can slip the shot, which means you are moving the, you're not changing the duration of the shot, you're just showing, changing what part of that clip you're actually um, looking at. Pretty cool. Uh, let's see here. Um, most of the drone shots were not shot log, they were shot Cine D profile, so they don't get a lot applied, they get a little bit of color correction applied to them. Let me see if I can find, yeah, I'm definitely looking at the wrong version of the project here, but that's okay. I can go in here and you can see some of the basic color work that was done on here. You notice this one, there's no audio on it, so the audio tab is gone. Makes sense, there's no audio on this one. Um, if I wanted to enhance this shot a little bit, I could take that. Let's go in and uh, let's say I want to increase the contrast, maybe not that much. Uh, take the saturation up on there, we'll bring some of the color in and so on. And I could be very careful about my highlights. If um, I'm worried about blowing up my highlights, I got highlight control in there. I can pull that down as well. Very nice. Uh, there's a lot more other stuff in here that we're not going to get into today, but just very quickly show you. There was the LUTs we looked at. There's things like vignette filters you can add to this. Um, you can add effects like blurs if you wanted to do that. Uh, I can go in here and add even like really odd creative effects in here, kaleidoscopes, that sort of thing. If you're shooting green screen, you can even do a key in here. Go figure, you can do a key in this thing. Crazy, right? Now I've added all these effects. See, these are all stacked up there on the, on the right. I'm gonna delete all those because I've just literally added all those effects onto this project, all onto that one clip on there. Uh, let's see here, what else do we wanna show in this? Um, oh, different audio tracks. So let's say, one of the things, yeah, this is definitely early version of it. Let me back out of this and pull up my final one. I'll just be very careful I don't uh, mess anything up in here. You'll notice on here that I've got a lot of different audio tracks. And sometimes it's music, but then you get into places where there's dialogue and there's fade in and outs on the track. So like there are the music I faded in, faded out. You see that's key framed in. But one of the things that I'll do often is I sometimes want my dialogue to start before the video, right? That's called an L cut or a J cut. Where I want to have the audio start before that video clip comes in. I can go in here and detach the audio and change the duration of the audio track. So it's basically now the audio is on a separate track, controlled independently from the video. A lot of stuff like that you can do. Pretty cool. Um, slowdowns. So when I first edited the project, I didn't do a lot of slow motion. I kind of decided to add a lot of that later. 
But by the time I decided to make such that a shot would look better in slow motion, I had already timed everything to the music, so I didn't want to just change the speed of it, change the speed, and then suddenly have it change the duration of the project. So what I would do, like what all these are right here, where there's double stacked on there, is the top one is slowed down. You can see it says 50%. Let me zoom into that. You see it says 50% right in the middle of that. And the one underneath it is not. So this allowed me to duplicate the, the clip, put it on top of it, make it 50%, and then adjust the timing of that clip on top without adjusting the timing of the entire project. Pretty neat, too. So like here, if I go in, and like this one of me walking, um, actually, I think, is that a good one? Yeah, sure, let's do that one there. You can probably tell if I take, oops, what did I just do? I dragged off in the wrong place. Let's here, try that again. I'm going to hit undo because I'm not sure what I just did there. Ha. Where was I? There it is. There we go. Zoom in on there. Um, yeah, that was 50%. If I play this through, you can see a little slow down in there. If I take this clip and delete it, we'll just delete it for now, then I'll undo that. There's the one underneath. And it's not like it's a huge difference in the speed, but it's that little bit of a slowdown in there that uh, just, just makes it a little bit smoother, makes it a little bit nicer. So, yeah, what else do I want to show you in here? That's, that's kind of the main stuff that I want to show. Oh, the photos. Let's take a quick look at that. So here I've got some photos that I brought in. So let's play through that. So this is a still photo that's been brought in and then keyframed. So if I open this thing up in here, you can see the frame and fit tool that I'm in right now. And you can see that I have um, keyframes on here. If you look down at the bottom where there's the timeline, there's a little dot. See so the dot at the very left and the dot at the very right of that. So there's the dot at the very right. And you can see as I jump back and forth between them, they were doing a very slight scale. So it's a very slow scale. I just want a very slow, gentle, subtle scale on that applied in there and then a transition between them. So there's and the transition is just a, a quick dip to white, if you will, dip to color, set to white. And then a little sound effect, a little pop sound effect in there just to kind of highlight that. Oops, let me zoom back into there. There we go. And play that through. A different one. And you'll see, you can see the sound effect right underneath it. A little fun stuff you can do like that. So overall, incredibly robust app. You can see there's a ton more to this. You can lift and stamp your effects. So let's say you've done a bunch of work to a single clip. I want to take that and basically lift and stamp or copy and paste those effects to another clip. You can do that. There's just an immense amount of stuff you can do in here with transitions, color grading, sound effects, and so on. And so that is what we're going to be covering over the next probably several months because it's going to take a while. We do one of these a week. And uh, on Thursdays at 1 o'clock is when we do them live, usually, unless something else comes up. And uh, it's going to take a while, but we're going to get deep, deep, deep into this app and try and show you everything that it can do. And, uh, and yeah, that's basically it. So I hope that you're going to enjoy this. I know this is a departure from what we usually do on the channel where we're focusing on still apps. But um, I know a lot of people are getting into video. A lot more, more and more people are doing video these days than ever before. Um, and the, this app is extremely popular. I know it's done very well for the company. A lot of people are using it and enjoying it. And so I figured it was time to dive into a training on this. So I hope that's okay with you all. I hope you're going to enjoy this over the next uh, several series, several sessions of uh, live training. And, uh, and I hope you enjoy everything else that's coming up next as well. So I haven't seen any questions pop up in the chat right now. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this thing up. If you come up with any questions later, you know what you can do. You can stick them in on the uh, YouTube video or uh, pop them over to me on social media, whatever, and I will do my best to get to them. So with that said, thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in today. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.